Hey, hey Alpha Fam, welcome back to the, you know, day, I don't know, 1,659 billion, gajillion, trillion, whatever of just going sideways on the Bitcoin chart. And here we are again, having a pullback after a pump, all these uh, pump and dumps just uh, left and right. And uh, guys, so again, we're just filled with red on the uh, chart, but we really haven't moved Anywhere, if we just uh, jump over uh, to the uh, last video that I made, uh, here's what I had to say. And you can see, yeah, sure, like uh, we could come all the way back down here to mm, 26,300, okay? And really, we're not going to be distorting this chart in any way. It's just going to be a pullback. And I could say, yeah, you know, uh, you know, maybe we're going to uh, continue on our way. However, uh, just to flip this little shelf over here and to hold on to these lows over here, it would be much better, especially in terms of keeping uh, bulls having the bias, if we held 26,750. So, all right, guys. Well, you can see that obviously uh, we didn't do that. And so, uh, you know, we did come down to the level that I did suggest that we could come down to. In fact, we're at 26,000. 400 and I was saying uh, 26,300 of course the uh, point of control that I had there uh, was uh, 26,180 I believe let's just pull that up is that still on there yeah 26,181 what did we actually come down to 26,144 so Pretty close, guys. Pretty close. Uh, again, like the, the Alpha Fam is absolutely killing it. Uh, you know, we had to flip levels up here. We got rejected up here. And so if we were going to have a pullback, then it was obvious we were going to probably come back, you know, just statistically likely to come back to this mid channel that I've had carved out here on this wedge. Now, everyone and their mother and their mother's dog and the uh, cat that the dog chases is now following. Uh, this wedge, but I've had this marked out for you guys since the beginning, and we've also had uh, something special over here at Alpha Commission, which is the uh, skeleton inside of the uh, wedge, which has been just ultra reliable as that uh, wedge mid channel or inner wedge or whatever you want to call it. And so we're just hanging out at the uh, edge of the inner wedge there, and right now. You know, it's hard to align these things perfectly. You know, could I bring it down? Then we're over it. You know, there's little wicks that we could touch over here. But then we're perfectly touching these ones. We're per perfectly touching this edge. You know, there's like wicks right here. Just you could play with it. And we're kind of above it. We're kind of below it. We're basically just hanging on to it. Okay, guys. So that's what we're doing. We're hanging on to it. And at least here on the six hour chart, we're under the Bollinger Band uh, midline. So that does suggest that it's not the strongest position. And we could easily just fill in the gap of this wedge again and then explore the bottom. And we could also just very easily uh, just uh, flip it and uh, try for the uh, top again. You see how that goes. We did that over here. You know, now we've put in some type of a structure over here. We explored the bottom. And are we just going to do another kind of like W shape or whatnot? I don't know. You don't know. Nobody on Twitter, nobody on YouTube uh, knows what's actually going to happen. The only thing that we can say is that if we solidly start building up some price action here, then uh, probably we have a good chance of flipping this to the upside. If we lose it, then probably we're first looking at 26,000. And, you know, then we could be talking about the bottom of the wedge here at 25,300 again, you know, or whatnot, right? Uh, guys, that's the wedge for you. If we just go ahead and jump over to the one hour, I can show you what we've got going on on the uh, one hour here just for you early birds who want to uh, catch this episode as soon as it comes out. You guys get a special treat because uh, these uh, levels will be uh, valid for you. Now, if you're watching this episode uh, late, then, of course, there should be uh, lots of adjustments. Now, the levels themselves will remain significant um, over multiple hours. It's just the volatility pivot may move up or down. In this case, you know, price action's up here, so it may just increase in uh, height, okay? So that means that the momentum pool is most valid for you. But if you're watching it right after it gets published, then, uh, you know, these levels uh, should be 
uh, relatively similar. And what you can see here is that we're actually pushing up against the bottom of the momentum pool. And so we fully explored the momentum pool uh, just in the last uh, 20 minutes, basically the first 20 minutes of this one hour uh, increment here. And if we get a bounce, we could just uh, come out at the top of it above a 26,448, but we're really not going to have any type of uh, upward bias until we get above that neutral point of control, which is 26,502. And just because, uh, like I was saying in the last episode, whenever there's a gap between the, um, the bias on the neutral point of control and the bias on the volatility pivot, which uh, we're above the volatility pivot, so that's great for bulls, but we're under Underneath the neutral point of control and that means that bears just have a slight edge as well so these are two different types of measure and so we're basically just in no man's land here of course if we get above the momentum pool and above the volatility pivot that's our best bet but if you really want to uh, push up towards the bullish control zone, you're going to have to take out that neutral point of control at 26,502. Let's just call it 26,500, which, uh, by the way, you can see over here, it is corresponding to the Bollinger Bands on the uh, one hour. And so that's a great setup, guys. You know, whenever you're uh, above the momentum pool and you're above the volatility pivot, and then you're able to flip up and grab that Bollinger Bands, then that's a, usually a nice uh, play to the upside because if you get embedded on that Bollinger Band as it moves to the upside, that can just push you over to that bullish control zone. So uh, this is the type of play that I like. And you can see we are pushing up uh, right now. So that was just a little bit of a check back. You do see we have a little bit of liquidity here that we might grab at the uh, general continuation at 26,367 before we actually move. You know, we could just go sideways also. But if we do lose that 26,367, then uh, there is a uh, pretty uh, likely statistical chance that we could come down and just explore the volatility pivot at 26,175. And then, you know, we could try again or get rejected, right? So guys, uh, that's the one hour for you. And, uh, you know, again, uh, you know, we don't get into that bullish control zone until we're above 26,954. Once again, showing that 27,000 is just a very important number. Okay. Like I just feel very iffy underneath there, but if the one hour gets into the bullish control zone, it's going to feel a lot better. Let's go ahead and jump over to the uh, six hour, which should uh, be valid for uh, plenty of you guys. It is having a uh, three and a half hours left on the chart. And then, of course, it's pretty valid for a couple six-hour sessions after that. And what you can see is that we did hang on to the momentum pool here above 26,379. We are currently pushing up to the general continuation line at 26,465. Should we flip that? And you can see that we did get a couple drives uh, down here on the uh, six hour, but now we're having a little bit of a uh, bullish uh, pop. Uh, should we be able to engulf this candle above that uh, general continuation? Then our target's going to be uh, similar to the one hour to take out the uh, neutral point of control here at 26,751 on these uh, longer time frames here. And that's also going to flip the Bollinger Bands midline should we get embedded above that. We do have a good chance of taking out the volatility pivot here at 27,000. 19. Again, guys, I can't understate how important 27,000 has been to this chart. I've just been repeating that number for like weeks and weeks and weeks. Okay, guys, uh, under 27,000, I don't really trust this chart. Above 27,000, you know, I'm willing to take a chance. Okay, and you know, it's we're getting closer to that point where we have to be at 28,000, uh, you know, 28,300. But, uh, you know, as long as we go sideways, then, you know, that whole area is fair play if you want to take uh, some risk. Uh, guys, uh, the bullish control zone on that six hour is 27,856. So just what I was saying, like 28,000, right? And, uh, you know, if we get that, then, of course, the uh, orientation of the day and some of those higher time frames may also be within reach to uh, just uh, maintain that bullish uh, momentum. However, we are driving down right now, and we did, um, you know, take out about you know, more than 50% of this candle. Uh, you know, do we take it from the wick to the top? Then, you know, we're basically just tagging that uh, golden zone at uh, the 618. And so this could be a great place just to launch off of. Um, 
but if we get continuation uh, lower than that, then you know the bearish control zone is within reach at 25,902. Uh, Breaching that, and we could see some uh, devastation on the uh, six-hour uh, charts. Guys, let's jump over to the daily, and the daily is going to have Again, very similar setup, guys, just uh, by the nature of the way that these candles are stacking, they're all pretty similar, which is, you know, although the neutral point of control is higher here, we're kind of like replacing it with the uh, volatility pivot at 26,873. Again, kind of that 27,000 area, right? The neutral point of control, 27,000 right in between these two, neutral point at 27,147. And then we also see the Bollinger Band is midlined right there for the daily. And so again, like we flip that volatility pivot and then uh, you know just we have one more step to get above the neutral point to control and we could see a blast off on the daily uh, assuming that we are able to take out the momentum pool here at uh, 26,579 and also uh, if we don't bonk our head on uh, the uh, general continuation line at 26,678 uh, bears will be defending that just because it flips the MACD bullish Right, so we can consider that kind of an extension of the momentum pool, but uh, yeah, volatility pool and uh, momentum pool, you know, it's it's within reach, and uh, um, you know, but falling underneath that, we will be underneath the volatility pivot and underneath the vol the momentum pool, and that is much closer here. So under twenty six thousand three hundred and forty six is going to be fairly risky on the day, and that could just see us a return to these lows at the twenty five thousand two hundred fifty. Not sure what's going on with the trading view; it's making my lines all weird. But uh, yeah, anyway, you guys get the point. So uh, that's the uh, daily for you. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, take a look at the three day because the three day does close within 24 hours, 21 hours to be exact. And if we look at the three day, this one is, yeah, this one is just a little bit more of a tough nut to crack in terms of flipping the uh, momentum pool. Just, it's not that. It's not doable, okay? Uh, and we are above the volatility pivot, which is cool because, you know, as long as we hang out above 25,920 on the three day, and again, this would play out in a couple three day sessions. All of these things could play out in a couple candles. It doesn't have, have to happen in the next candle. It could play out, right? And so, uh, you know, in the next, uh, you know, a couple three day sessions, if we are able to get above that 26,800, 27,000, then we do have a good chance of taking out the uh, momentum pool at 27,514, where we will add momentum. And we're also going to have that chance to flip the Bollinger Bands uh, midline, which could, again, just send us up to the bullish control zone, which here currently is at 30,275. And so if you are one of these uh, swing traders, then that would be the play that you would be looking for to the upside. Now, if you're not a, uh, if you're not uh, bullish, then what you would be looking for is for us to breach these lows over here at 25,742. That will put us underneath the volatility pivot. That will put us underneath the momentum pool, and that will be uh, you know a fairly likely chance of trying to come down here and tagging uh, the bearish control zone at 24,000. Uh, 50 so that's actually pretty low now I know a lot of guys are looking for uh, 24,000 24,500 uh, before we really take off and so I don't put this you know I don't dismiss this idea there's good reasons to think that we are going to at least come down to that area but uh, I don't have a bias one way or another right now, guys. I think we're just struggling with this stuff. You know, we're kind of in these neutral territories, and I'd rather just deal with where we are. But, uh, you know, a lot of people are thinking, you know, maybe we're going to just grab a little bit more liquidity down here before we have any chance to take off. And it could take a while, and we could also easily lose that zone and just continue on our merry way to the downside. Uh, yeah, but right now... You know, you can see both setups. Okay, guys, that's the uh, three-day. I think what I would like to do is actually just uh, go through these things with the uh, EMAs. So let's turn off our uh, Bollinger Bands there, and let's just go ahead and uh, take a look at how our EMAs are doing. 
And what you can see is on the uh, one hour, we do have an interesting squeeze going on here. This could end up being a, a 21 uh, 9 squeeze. However, the 21 is pointed down right now. And actually, the uh, 20 uh, SMA is pointed even more down. So this could end up having a pullback just as easily, uh, sort of like, you know, sort of like up here, just kind of like pulled back. And so you know but flipping you know flipping this area flipping this yellow line and this yellow line then that would suggest that that squeeze is probably on and then you have a natural limitation here over at the 200 at 26760 let's go ahead and take a look at the uh, 6 hour and the 6 hour is much more bearish so unfortunately uh, this one has all of our EMAs you know at least on the short term here, pointed to the downside. So underneath the four, underneath the nine, underneath uh, both uh, 20s over here, and then also, you know, the 35, 50, and the 300 is overhead and the 200 is overhead. So, you know, this is just a very, in some sense, you know, on the six hour, we've lost the 200. We re, um, you know, we retested it and then we lost it again. So that's not a good look. And as long as we're underneath this area right here, uh, underneath 26,700-ish, then there's not really a good chance of us, um, you know, uh, not a high probability chance of us just pumping or anything like that. But, you know, should we get over that area? Again, 27,000, right? Basically 27,000. Then you can see that uh, what would happen is that that would initiate um, a squeeze between this 300 and the uh, 9 and the 21 and also the uh, 200 up here. And if we were able to put price action, that could be a pretty powerful uh, squeeze. Historically speaking, you know, breaking through the 300 and the 200 can lead to pretty uh, powerful moves. So we would be looking forward uh, to that should it be able to be possible. And we are getting a little bit of a positive candle. So, you know, fingers crossed, right? Um, and we were also at that uh, 618 FIB going over to the daily. Uh, we can see the same thing. Um, you know, we're being supported here. Actually, this is a key difference by the 300 and the 200 over here. Um, but we are getting pushed down um, by the uh, 9 and the 21. And we are under like just every EMA. Okay, so that does suggest that we are continuing to be at risk of putting in, uh, you know, basically the same scenario I was talking about, but upside down, where if we get into this little wedge that I've just drawn out right here, then we could very easily just push against these EMAs, start curving them down, and then that would, you know, put a catastrophic drop to maybe, you know, 23, 24, maybe even 22, okay, before we, you know, have to talk about it again. And so, you know, staying above these key levels, again, 27,000 is going to be what keeps us safe. OK, because you can see we're going to be above those uh, key um, EMAs on the daily should we be at 27,000. And that could squeeze us to the upside and just narrowly miss this garbage down here. So we don't want to hang out uh, below 26,500 for too much longer, guys. We are getting into a uh, you know, into a squeeze to the downside here. Yep. OK, on the three day. You can see that, of course, we have essentially already squeezed. You can see what happened, right? We had that nine uh, EMA up here, and then we had this uh, 300 and the 200 over here, the orange and the uh, uh, and the white line, and we got that squeeze that I've been talking about here uh, to the downside, and that's why we've just been having this fall. Of course, we were warning about that when it was happening, but. You know, we also have to look back and remember what's going on. Then you have the 200 coming from overhead. And so this one is also acting as a natural barrier. You can see there seems to be this kind of distance that we've been hanging out uh, from the uh, 200 EMA, uh, pardon me, the 200 uh, simple moving average up here. And so we've just been maintaining this distance. And unless we start uh, pushing into that territory that the uh, 200 SMA has claimed uh, for itself, you know, this kind of force field uh, that it's projecting down here just to uh, keep its distance, unless we start pushing up into that, you know, we're just going to continue to get pulled down by the uh, EMA and uh, the 200 EMA and the uh, 300 EMA on the uh, three day here, which could just continue uh, this drop, right? So 
in some ways, this could potentially set up a, a squeeze to the upside should we be able to get above 27,000, 27,400 uh, ish. We could end up squeezing through that 200 simple moving average and turning this up to the upside. But right now, that's a very uh, Pollyanna ish, uh, you know, look at it. And it just on the three day, it just doesn't look that great. But we are getting this support. And you can see that in the past, when we have this type of a structure, you know, it could look pretty bad, but somehow you just kind of dip down and then you narrowly come back up, right? So we are going to be looking for this potential opportunity in this area should we end up uh, dipping more and grabbing some liquidity and then just going on our way. We don't necessarily have to just keep falling down, guys, okay? Like sometimes you just make the, the, the little candy cane shape and then you just keep going, right? But uh, at this time, yeah, just the more risk, more risk under 27,000. And to be honest, I'd strongly prefer to be above 27,300. And I really think we need to be above 28,300, you know, 28,500 just to just to change the dynamics of what's going on here. You know, we've just been oriented like this for too long. But again, it's a falling wedge. And, uh, you know, these things do have that 70% uh, st statistical likelihood to a uh, break to the upside. So even if we have a flash wick down, as long as we recover it and kind of build in a little bit of a, a structure there, bull structure, then we would have a measured move at least to uh, 30,000, you know, if you want to go by the uh, statistics of it. Guys, that's your alpha for the day. Stay safe and happy trading.